Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video I'm going to tell you about the cheapest Mini ITX AMD AM4 motherboard from AliExpress. This one is Tinsha A320, B350 or B450 MITX motherboard. The motherboard looks like this and available in three different chipset configurations, just like the name suggests. Actually, for this review I have tested two samples. This one comes with a B350 chipset and here I have another one that is still equipped with my testing equipment with a 320 chipset. Everything I'm going to tell about this motherboard is applicable to both of the samples and even though I have tested two of them, it does not guarantee that the one you get will work identically. Never forget that AliExpress is a lottery and you may get a defective unit or there might be some deviations. So, A320 and B350 chipset. The main difference is the overclocking possibility. With B350 you have CPU overclocking feature and AMD Ryzen Master works just fine. With A320 though, overclocking options are not available and AMD Ryzen Master does not work. Still, in the BIOS we have a possibility to enable AMD PBO or Precision Boost Overdrive even though it's not supposed to work with A320 chipset. In the BIOS with both of the motherboards we also have options to tune memory, adjust memory speed and adjust memory timings. Unfortunately, in the BIOS I did not find an option to adjust memory voltage, which might be important or required if you want to run your memory at XMP speeds. When you have AMD Ryzen Master enabled with the B350 chipset, then memory voltage can be adjusted using Ryzen Master, but in case of A320 chipset, you don't have such possibility and you may not be able to achieve the XMP certified memory speeds. Ok, that was a rather lengthy introduction of the motherboard, but now let me cover the important part. The weakest point of the motherboard is the VRM. I don't know why or what Chinese thought when they made this motherboard, but the VRM here is so bad that even with a Ryzen 5 CPU, which is not overclocked, the VRM reaches 110 degrees Celsius without direct stream of air, which is cooling up the components. This is really pathetic and it, in my opinion, kills the purpose of Mini ITX. When you build a Mini ITX computer, you most likely have a restricted airflow and you don't have an option to install an extra fan with a direct airflow over the VRM to keep it cool. So I really don't understand how they could mess up this badly. Of course, if you are handy and maybe if you have small heat sinks on your hands, you will be able to glue them onto the VRM MOSFETs and implement better air cooling and cool down the system. But all in all, if you're building a mini ITX system and the airflow is restricted, I would strongly suggest to go with another motherboard that at least has a radiator over the VRM zone. Other than that, the motherboard is pretty decent. There are some positives, some negatives, and if you're interested in all these details, then let's go through my slides and I will tell you everything. In terms of the specification, the motherboard is pretty basic. You have all the necessary features. If you want to know the details, just put the video on pause and read the slide. The interesting part is that both A320 and the B350 motherboards I have tested support Ryzen CPUs from 1000 to 5000 series. In the hardware test results I don't have much to cover. USB, SATA, smartphone, PC Express, MD2, audio and the LAN ports all work as they supposed to. The smartphone function obviously works with 4-pin PWM fans only and we have a single header. The other header is 3-pin and those fans will rotate at 100% speed. It's also interesting to see that the BIOS here can be successfully read and written using Alpha Win, so the BIOS is not locked and if someone can modify this BIOS for better features or better performance, that would be very much welcomed. The features of the motherboard are not as complete as I would wish. Even though sleep mode works, headless boot also works and RAM timings can be adjusted in the BIOS, there is no way to enable XMP profile, so you would have to tune your memory manually because of the default memory timings are just atrocious and memory latency is really bad. 
Another missing important feature is resizable bar. Unfortunately, it's not available in the BIOS, and in inspecting the BIOS with Amip CP tool, I have discovered that there are hidden options to enable a resizable bar. Of course, I have tried to enable a resizable bar through these hidden options, but unfortunately they do absolutely nothing and resizable bar still does not work on this motherboard. So if you're considering using this Qingxia B350 or A320 motherboard with an Intel GPU, this is a big no-go. On the positive side, we have an ECC mode that is supported and works. Here it's important to clarify that ECC registered memory is not going to work with consumer platforms. But if you have a Ryzen CPU that supports ECC, unbuffered or UD memories, then this motherboard also supports it and ECC mode actually works. PCI Express buffication unfortunately is not available. Clear CMOS restore on power loss work and AMD Ryzen Master works with the B350 chipset, does not work with A320 chipset as expected. For the extra notes I can say that the CPU power consumption sensor works, the motherboard boots extremely fast and we do not have any VRM temperature sensors. I guess Chinese did not want to embarrass themselves with 110 degrees Celsius on the VRM. For memory, I have tested both of the motherboards with Corsair DDR4-3600 memory and even though this is XMP speed, I was able to achieve it with XMP timings using AMD Ryzen Master on the B350M motherboard. Sadly, that's not possible with A320 option because there Ryzen Master is not functioning. ECC memory sticks I have are DDR4-2400 and this worked just fine with ECC function enabled on both of the motherboards. For the CPUs I have tested Ryzen 5, 1600, 2600, 3600 and 5600. What's interesting is that 1600, 2600 and 3600 in Cinebench R23 score just slightly above the average score on the internet. The power consumption is also very reasonable and the idle power consumption is very decent too. On average, idling this system would consume about 34-35 watts, fully equipped with a GPU, SSD, keyboard and monitor, which is rather impressive. The last CPU Ryzen 5 5600 gave me a little bit of headache. By default, for whatever reason, the CPU would throttle to only 45 watts of TDP, and in that case it performs just like Ryzen 5 3600. I tried everything I could, I even tried to do fresh Windows installation, but the CPU would still throttle itself. With the B350 motherboard we can use Ryzen Master, so I simply enabled auto overclocking, and in this case the CPU or the entire system from the wall starts to pull 165 watts under Cinebench R23 multi-core test. The scores were still just under the average score on the internet for Ryzen 5 5600, which is a little bit disappointing, and that's probably because the VRM simply overheats and not able to keep up with such power consumption. In case of the A320 motherboard, we do not have Ryzen Master, so I could not enable a CPU auto overclocking, so I had to go into the BIOS settings and enable PBO or Precision Boost Overdrive. As far as I know, this feature is not supposed to be working on A320 motherboards, but in case of Tinsha A320, the feature is there and it works. Once enabled, Ryzen 5 5600 works almost on the desired level with this motherboard. The scores are slightly lower than what you would find on average on the internet, and it was a bit lower than auto overclocked option with B350, but still, it was close to normal scores. The power consumption was around 141 watts in the Cinebench multi-core stress test. Finally, what can I say for the conclusion? Tinsha A320 B350 B450 ITX motherboard is currently available on AliExpress for 45-55 euros depending on the cheap set. Overall, it is an okay motherboard, but the VRM kills the purpose of mini ITX. The VRAM is so bad that it reaches 110 degrees Celsius under stress test with a simple Ryzen 5 CPU, so I could not give it any higher score than 6 out of 10, and probably it also deserves 5 out of 10.
If you're handy and you are able to keep the VRM cool, then you need to know that the motherboard also does not have XMP, does not have resizable bar, does not have PCI Express buffication, and AliExpress support from the sellers is obviously not existing. So if you shall buy it or shall not buy it is obviously your decision, but I would say you probably shall stay away from this motherboard. And if you need a mini ITX AMD A4 motherboard from AliExpress, then uh, you could take a look at the TUA B450i Plus motherboard instead.